Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Adam here. Last time on Flying and Eating, I flew out to Sacramento, California. My buddy Jesse picked me up. We pulled an all-nighter driving all the way through Oregon. We checked out the last Blockbuster again, and we also ate a bunch of great stuff. And now it's time to do something that will make a lot of people very nostalgic. So now we are up in Astoria, Oregon. Again, this is where The Goonies was filmed. We'll show you a little bit of that later, probably, hopefully, maybe some bits here and there, because this is not the first time we've been here. It's actually your third time. Um, but uh, yeah, we spent the night over at our buddy Marcus's house. Yep. Really cool to put us up. Uh, we're heading over to his arcade. We're going to do some work over there. And we'll sh I'll show you some bits of stuff here. But right now, we felt the need to kind of redeem yesterday. So we had that terrible Burgerville stuff. And you were saying something about that this morning. Man, it, it bounced around in my head yesterday. And I, my final conclusion was it was a horrible burger. <laughs> It, 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 same with me, like the more I thought about it, I'm like, oh, it was really bad. So it has been recommended to us to go to this place called Maritime, Maritime. Um, which is actually very near, it's, downtown Astoria is not big, mm -hmm. um, but there's this place called Maritime and we're going to go over there because you've had it, right? Oh man, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I, see, funny thing is last time we were here, I kept being told like, go there, go there. They were closed every single day for totally different reasons. Like one day they're like, oh, we're repainting. Uh, one day, oh, we don't have enough employees. One day, mm -hmm. COVID concerns. One day, we're just not open on Mondays, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And it was like, so we were here for like a week, and it was every single day was closed for so, totally different reasons. So I never got to try it. So And I was <sighs> sad. Yeah. Hopefully today, it finally is my time to shine. Mm -hmm. So any film buffs out there, you might appreciate what you're about to see. We've taken a little detour. It's something we've seen already. We've been Plenty here. Plenty of times. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, we're, this was OG to us. But uh, you guys might appreciate uh, you're about to see something kind of cool, something that might be kind of familiar, especially any children of the 80s or the 90s. So when you get to the top of this hill, you'll see something a little familiar. Hey, you guys, this is the Goonies house. There you go. We've been here before. Uh, it's a cool place. Um, it's nice to see one of the Hollywood houses. Uh, we've, you know, it, it's cool. We, you come up this way, do not drive up here. Just walk up, come take your pictures. Don't really go that far in, of course. Be respectful. And then you get to enjoy it, and you head out. Um, and we'll show you a little bit something else. You can kind of see it down there in the distance. This, like, blob over there. It's this building. Anybody recognize it? It's not a tumor. You should definitely recognize it. This is my building. I took school here. I was a cop. I was kindergarten cop. Okay, hopefully you guys got the reference by now. But yeah, this is where they filmed Kindergarten Cop, is this school right there. So it's just down the street from the, uh, the Goonies house. So if you ever want to see two... Strange little Hollywood icons, they're right here in Astoria, Oregon. The county jail from the beginning of the Goonies. Uh, this is actually the ORV. This is a custom one, it's even got like little fake bullet holes in the back and everything. So, cool, uh, I've been in there. This is where the opening scene takes place, the little jailhouse and everything. Um, they have it as a museum now, and you can see there it actually says Goonies on it. Um, I've done the little museum tour, it's cool. It's very, very small, but it's got a gift shop, and it's got, it even has a hidden treasure area if you actually feel like checking it out, but uh, it's, it's, it's not bad. But yeah, if you like the Goonies, I'm telling you, the story is the place to be, because that makes sense, that's why they filmed it. The cosmic joke persists. Uh, Merry Time is closed again today. I, uh, is it because I'm here? Is that it? Like, do they just not want to be open when I'm around? Like, oh, that dork's coming. Close. He might he might get a burger and enjoy it. Can't have that. No. <laughs> just whatever. So what we're going to do is, last time we were here, we were trying a series of breakfast places in the area, and we found one we really, really liked. Unfortunately, we found it very late. So we're going to go do that. All right, so here's what's going on. Uptown Cafe is open. Again, it's very rare to find an open place here. It's great, uh, but Uptown Cafe has never let us down, but we're gonna upgrade. Rather than doing breakfast like we did last time, which I had a killer French toast last time. Oh, and a great country fried steak and eggs. But today, I'm all about burgers now, because we're totally in that mode. They got some cool ones. I think I'm gonna combine the world here. A breakfast burger, look at that. One third burger patty, pound burger patty, ham, bacon, fried egg, Tillamook cheese, which Tillamook cheese is a very local cheese to the Pacific Northwest. Um, pepper jack, lettuce, tomato, onion, mayo, and it comes with, uh, I think I'm gonna go with the onion rings on the side. That is happening. 
So small update there. I decided to go with the tots because I typically ask people what they think. And even she though was right she, was, she was like, oh, the tots for sure. And the tots are actually cheaper. Not that I cared as much about that, but you know they must be better when they cost less money and still the staff is pushing that. Food has arrived. Tater tots, breakfast burger. I got ketchup on the side ready to go for those tots. You excited? I am very excited. Look at the size of this thing. It's a beast. Just diving in. It's good. It's definitely better than like any traditional like fast food burger. I don't think I would go, I wouldn't call it gourmet. And the reason you can tell is a gourmet burger, it'll be like, how do you want it cooked? Do you want it rare, medium rare, well done? Any place where they just kind of cook it one way, that typically means it's, it's in between gourmet and fast food. But this is exactly, this is solid for what I was craving. I wanted a burger, it was in my system, and I'm not regretting that decision. This makes my tummy happy. He's happy about it. Well, sorry, you also got something else with it. Yeah, I got some uh, sweet potato fries. Have you had one yet? Yes. What it's do you think? Pretty delicious. So the tots are good. I, mean, I traded Jesse a single tot, which he's about to have, for a single potato fry. Do you recommend this with ketchup, with ranch, or nothing? Um, I, I like it with ranch, but... All right. I got a ranch, so we're good to go on that. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. That's good. That's a very nice crispy top. It's, it's, these are nice soft, and it's, obviously the ranch gives it this nice creamy base with the, um, with the sweet potato. It's good. The tots are nice and crispy. I hate mushy tots. He's 100% right. So good. These are nice. The crispiness is solid. It's firm. Nothing worse than a tot that's soggy and falling apart on you. We're done with the restaurant. We're now over at the arcade, which is called... Galactics! Yeah! Um, this is Marcus, by the way. Marcus, Hello. introduce yourself to the fine folks out there. Hello, I'm Marcus from Sunset Hotline and also Galactics. We're opening uh, mid-December. This is a sci-fi themed vapor uh, synthwave style arcade tap house. 24 taps, 40 games, pinball, so it's pretty awesome in Astoria. Astoria, Oregon, Goonies Town, and uh, Kindergarten Cop Town, and Free Willy, and Ninja Turtles 3, but you guys don't seem to own that one as much as you do the others. But by the time you've seen this video, this is probably already open. Yeah. So I want you guys to come out and check it out. We're going to go take another little stroll around, but let's, let's, let's look here. So he's got these like decked out booths and everything. These light up. There's like, you hear the speakers right now. There's actually like this cool narration program that comes up. And at some point, I make a cameo. I voice some character who's incredibly neurotic. It was a fun play. Um, and we got references to all your base art belong to us. There's arcade games all around. And I'm going to take you over. My buddy Jesse here, buddy, gets out of the way. <laughs> and we'll head over here and we'll see there is a bar looking thing. I'm assuming that's a full bar. Yeah. And then, you know, tables and things and so on and so forth. And my personal favorite, my single favorite moment about this entire place, right here, what's called the relief hatch, which is a bathroom that is lit up. Shit in style. Guys, something happened. I think I might have dimension hopped. Look at this, we have both Polybius and a Sega Pluto. I gotta admit that this universe is kinda cool though, cause you know, Sega still makes consoles here and Polybius was one of the biggest hits of all time. And right there, Keep It Retro is the biggest YouTube channel in existence. So in case it isn't obvious, Astoria is a town that definitely owns the fact that such an iconic movie like The Goonies was shot here. Uh, a lot of the architecture was actually recycled, of course, for the movie. Uh, some stuff that actually originally served that purpose. Like, if you remember in the movie, Mikey's dad works at, like, the Astoria Museum, which is actually that right there. When, uh, when they're riding on their bikes and he's like, hey dad, oh, hi Mikey, it's that over there. But if you remember the very beginning of the movie with the police chase, there's a scene where Chunk goes up to the window and he's just like looking outside. Boom, that was right here. Right here, the bowling alley was the arcade in the movie that Chunk is playing at. And he looks out and he like presses against this glass and he like gets the pizza and uh, <laughs> the drink all over himself and yells out. So the cop cars would have come right down this street. So I thought I would show you guys a little bit of the, uh, the boardwalk here. So this is basically where the land ends. And then they built like this kind of walkway system, like a pier that uh, basically goes all the way down throughout the whole town. And of course out there you have, uh, you know, the water. Um, but it's cool, you can walk across this whole thing. And uh, we're gonna do a little bit of that right now. See some of these pillars here. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Now, 
in the movie, um, the, at the Goonies at the end, you would kind of think it was filmed here, but actually most of those shots were filmed in California. I think some of them were filmed here in the original version, but they did reshoots, and the reshoots were all done in parts of California. So the majority of the stuff that was filmed here was like the stuff in the house uh, and, you know, the, the jail area and stuff like that, um, as well as a lot of the, the chasing sequence stuff. But uh, a lot of other stuff was just done on sets. Um, there is the, the, if I recall correctly, like the, the, the Fratelli's house, like that thing was not a real place. They built that. Um, so most of that stuff I think was shot in cal parts of California, but, uh, there you go. For those who are into the Goonies, and if you're not, you should definitely see that movie. I don't know how it's possible you've made it this far in life and you've never seen the Goonies. But, uh, yeah, basically it's a very, I guess <laughs> the perfect word for it would be a quaint little town. Uh, but you can see... This is basically downtown Astoria right here, so it's 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 a cool place to do. You know, it's got it's surprisingly big film history, um, and so I, I showed you guys briefly the Goonies Jail, which is you know what everybody kind of calls it, even though it's actually technically the Oregon Film Museum, and inside it just has a, a lot of history about film in Oregon, but also very specifically um, Astoria, which I, I pointed out, you know, a lot of other movies, like again, Free Willy, uh, Short Circuit. The Short Circuit house is here, although I, that movie means nothing to me, so I wouldn't even know what it looked like. So it's, it's, I have spent time in this city before, so I know I'm pretty familiar with how to navigate it, but a lot of American cities, the better designed ones actually function like grids. But this is going to sound like a weird comparison. Um, if I had to compare Astoria, Oregon to any other American city, oddly enough, the one that comes to my mind, which won't help too many people, <laughs> is Anchorage, Alaska. Anchorage, Alaska has a very similar vibe, tone, and layout for those who have ever been there. I actually ate at this place once. Uh, I forget what it's called off the top of my head. I had like a fish and chips. It's called the Silver Salmon Grill. It was okay. I don't think I would do it again, but you know, it's something to do. Um, they have a lot of, you know, kitschy type of shots, shops, but I guess kitschy wouldn't be the right word. There are places that definitely own the fact that they have Goonies stuff. You'll find Goonies merch galore. But there's also a lot of like crystal shops and like um, Wiccan type of things. There's a magic shop right there. Pawn shop, actually, that one's kind of good. It's got some video game stuff in it. Um, so obviously smoke shops, of course, uh, marijuana is completely legal in this state. Uh, but yeah, and then a lot of knick-knack type of stops, shops, uh, like antique shops, like there you go, there's just flight captain and some random, there's a lot of, that's the tone, that's what I'm trying to say. There's a, there's a lot of oddity in this town, but in, in a good way. So I needed some coffee. So I know it's late at night, obviously, but whatever, I'm an addict. This one, never, uh, pizza is a coffee chain on the west coast. You see a lot in California, whatever. Bottled stuff is just nothing. But what's interesting, caramel dulce, no big deal. Truffle. Truffle shuffle, I had to do it. So I'm going over to a place called Curry and Thai Cocoa Eatery in Astoria, Oregon. Last time I was here, we had this place. I had a pad thai. I think it was the best pad thai I've ever had in my entire life. So Jesse's getting the same thing. But Marcus is cool enough that he's going to pay for it. So I decided I'm going to try something a little different for you guys. I'm going to explore a little bit. So I'm going to be getting the pineapple and uh, beef curry or something like that. I don't even remember what the hell I ordered. But it, it sounded pretty good with a side of some sort of pineapple fried rice. So I think... I want pineapple, is what the subconscious is telling me, I guess, but yeah, it'll be cool. So this is my pineapple rice there, and uh, this is the curry I ordered, which was just a coincidence. I just got that kind of, I know it's dark, I just kind of got that as a side, but I'm glad I did, because this doesn't have any rice, so I'm gonna mix that together. And uh, Jesse here got this pad thai. Now I had this last time, this is absolutely fantastic pad thai, but I felt like just trying something different. So if anybody's a horror fan, we're actually on a bridge right now that looks like this. Look at that. This yeah. is a straight up Silent Hill bridge, man. Yeah. Don't go over it. I mean, it would make for a great shot, but uh, probably shouldn't do it. All right, guys. Check this out. This is what we've got. We've got this string cheese uh, that is, what is it? Olive oil and garlic and herbs. I found this the other day. I don't know. It just intrigued me. And uh, we also have some sourdough bread that uh, Marcus said we could have. So Jesse and I are going to do a little makeshift cheese sandwich type of thing going on here. So Jesse was cool enough to cut up bread for me. I don't know why he did that. I thought he was doing that for himself. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought that's what we were making. But okay, fine. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I'm going to make. I'm going to have 
a weird cheese sandwich. I had a little bite of the cheese, he's right, it's got a little kick to it, but they also have a toaster oven, so why not? Let's just have this weird cheese sandwich and see what happens. There's the end result, my <laughs> partially burned, partially melted cheese ghetto sandwich. So final thoughts on this, an amusing little thing to do in the morning. Actually, the, it's kind of cool, the oil and the spices just kind of bleed out into the bread, so it actually does feel like a real sandwich. Uh, just a fun thing to do, nothing really super special, obviously. So today is our final day in Astoria here, at least as part of this adventure. Uh, right now, we're just getting a little bit of you know food, whatever, as always. We're hoping to try out this like fish and chips place. Mm. Another one of these things that's always closed. Always closed. But it might be open today, so we're going to be excited about that. After all that's done, we finished up all this work we've been doing at this arcade, Galactics, which you should totally check out if you're ever out in Astoria, Oregon. Uh, we're going to be heading up to Seattle. So I have been told fish and chips is the way to go. We're going seafood and chips, so yes, I'm going to get it with the steak fries. And you were going on about the Petroli Sole, right? Yes, Specifically. sir. Yeah. So that's what's happening. I'm going to get a Petroli Sole, fish and chips, and what are you doing? Chowder. you got to get some chowder here. They Why? Also have awesome fry bread. I'm gonna probably get the fish tacos, which are salsa. Okay, fish tacos, and what do you get? Fish tacos and the chowder sounds good too. All right. So you you recommend a side in addition to this? If you want to enjoy life, <laughs> if I want to fullest, enjoy life, live life to the fullest. Yeah, I mean, I'm drinking a cider uh, from Reveille Cider Company, an amazing craft cidery, farmhouse style blend. This one is called Breakfast in America. It's an English style apple pear citrus botanical cider. It's absolutely brilliant. We're gonna be serving downstairs at Galactics. Uh, we're gonna have 24 taps, and quite a few taps are gonna be dedicated to Reveille Cider here in town. So, but there's alcohol in that? Yes. Okay, so I'm, I, I'm very Midwestern. I'm used to apple cider, meaning just apple cider. This is hard cider. Yes, that's, the, that's what I'm saying. Yes. For the, those out there who are like, damn, they really like apple juice. I love like, apple juice. <laughs> So yeah, the, um, the more purplish looking ones are basically like entire octopus bodies, like little little octopus. Um, these are more like um, tentacles kind of wrapped. And this is like a sauce that I, w I think is, I mean, I could be wrong, but it kind of tastes like half mayo, half ketchup, so mayo chup or something, or fancy sauce if you ever saw Step Brothers. But uh, I think that's what that is. Normally, again, if this was just mine, I would sprinkle lemon over the entire thing. Well, this is really good, very good. Usually I don't put the crackers in the soup, but in this case, I think this really enhances it. Like when you put the two together, this is really something. Really quite like this. Good call on the soup there, man. Soup, chowder. Food has arrived, my fish and chips, there you go. Of course, I. it's very traditional to have it with lemon. I always just sprinkle it all over, I love that. And here you go. Anyway, I'll, I'll not be doing that, but I will be using it. Really? I will really not be doing that. I mean, please comment below who should use malt vinegar on your fish and chips, honestly. Feel free to drink that directly, but what did you get? This is the banh mi with petroli sole. So you got a Vietnamese sandwich. fish sandwich, yeah, right fantastic. on. And Jesse got? I got the uh, same fish, the patrol, but these are the tacos. Dude, I can barely tell that those are tacos. It's just like an explosion of ingredients. It's, it's pretty cool, actually. Pretty amazing looking. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna dive right in, everybody. Except for that, we're not doing that. So far, so good on this. My only complaint, so the tartar sauce is really good. The food itself is really good. The only issue I've got is partially the distribution. Getting the fish into this, difficult. If it was like a more spaced out bowl and there was just like a big area to plop the sauce. I always get an extra side and I just use a fork to cut the corner and dip it in there. Yeah, but all I'm saying is if I, if I had like a plate, like a real plate, yeah. problem solved. That's all I'm saying. But the food itself, amazing. So you see the benefit now. Once it's gone, and now I need ketchup for the fries, which I've added, look at that, I can very easily dip them. That's, that's all I'm saying. It's just basic, like, gravity working in your favor. Gravity is a good thing. But the food quality, to be real with you, is really good. These are really good steak fries. The fish was fantastic. Very happy about that. What do you think of your fish tacos? Happening? Pretty amazing. I'm working on my last one now. Would you do it again? Yes. I know you would. Yeah, I yeah, that's that's week. kind of yeah, exactly. That's a given. But uh, yeah, I like it a lot. And one thing that's really great about it is that it's actually open. So the food was really good. And on the way out, we were getting some dessert. They hooked us up. We got some bread pudding here with some ice cream. We'll attach it. Some caramel sauce, just like the one you saw down in Dallas that I did at the Y.O. Steakhouse. But this is a little bit. Uh, put it to yourself. I think it. I think or do it yourself. I think it'll be kind of good. Oh, it's good. So it's um, it's cool as the ice cream blends into the, the warmth of the pastry part, the bread pudding. And then it gives it kind of this constantly like refreshing flavor. 
as you're eating the bread pudding itself. I've had better bread pudding. I will say the one in Dallas was better. But this is this is just a nice sweet dessert treat. This is good. I would say it tastes a lot like a French toast. For anybody out there who has never had this before, at least this particular one tastes a lot like a French toast to me. The ice cream really makes it too. So our time in Astoria is now complete. Uh, we are now heading up to Seattle for the next part of the adventure, which will be, of course, its own separate video. So huge shout out to Marcus for all of his hospitality and putting us up there. And uh, of course, the food, he was very nice to do that. Yeah. Had a very good time on this trip so far and looking forward to the next bit of it. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, please like, comment, subscribe, go in the description, find all the social media stuff, follow us there, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, yada, 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 Discord, Patreon, all that sort of stuff. Right. It's all there. Uh, thank you very much. Follow Jesse too. He's got an Instagram. You can, you can see other random things that show up there. Anyway, see you guys in the next one.